Good morning and uh, Merry Christmas and no we're not preparing a uh, Christmas uh, meal or anything like that uh, and no this is in Al's autopsy room uh, it happens to be a uh, uh, a beef heart a fresh beef heart uh, that I am preparing uh, to use for uh, uh, feeding my little slithering uh, neonates that uh, won't uh, dine on uh, a normal uh, rodents at the moment. Uh, so we're not going to even bother to go into the anatomy of a beef heart, but I'm going to go ahead and dice it up into, uh, into different portions and then show you why this makes uh, such a, uh, a very good uh, uh, type uh, material to force feed your snakes. Um, now coming closer without grossing people out, look at that. That's solid muscle. That is just so packed with protein which your little beasties need to feed on. Plus it's firm and uh, you know doesn't explode when you try to force feed it. Uh, and if you want you can even get a little bit of the uh, uh, endocardium here with uh, with fat on it to uh, uh, to get into your little beasties. It's smooth, it's glistening, it's uh, uh, very easy to slide down their little gullets. Uh, furthermore, uh, what makes it very very nice is you can cut it into little portions and uh, I'll show you uh, you can cut it I don't want to get too close to my uh, pointy end of my knife there because it is a, a real sharp one. You can make these nice little steaklets uh, uh, which uh, uh, can be easily uh, uh, fed into the snake uh, and uh, actually they'll uh, uh, it's been reported in many books and such that uh, uh, they actually find this tasty and uh, um, I don't know if I would find it tasty but uh, uh, this is a uh, solid muscle so what I do is uh, I spend some time uh, preparing uh, bits like this and uh, throw them into little plastic bags and freeze uh, what I'm not going to be using immediately and uh, I throw about 10 pieces or 20 pieces per bag and they'll separate and I can un unfreeze uh, little bits at a time uh, and I can easily cut it uh, even after it's uh, thawed. So each snake will get uh, a properly uh, sized uh, piece of heart and uh, like I said it's packed with uh, protein uh, being the strongest uh, muscle in uh, typically an animal's body um, and certainly the one of the most active muscle it uh, theoretically never stops from before birth until death and if uh, kept in reasonably good shape uh, it'll keep you going for a long time so there's a lot of uh, protein uh, to be broken down here uh, to feed an actively little building body of a snakelet one thing for sure there's always plenty of leftover beef heart uh, for those animals who don't need any help in feeding, uh, uh, Miss Channing is uh, uh, trying to engulf this uh, rather large beef cube. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if uh, uh, she try. I mean, this compresses fairly well, so um, she should be able to get it down. But it's it's just funny uh, uh, seeing up seeing them uh, dining on uh, large cubes of beef uh, um, it's a bit of a mouthful there young lady huh she took it right away 
I should have maybe had that, but I wanted uh, something significant for her to dig her fangs into, other than hitting the uh, uh, tool. Well, here's uh, one of our calcitrant uh, feeders. Uh, one of these little Protobothrops uh, Geridoni xanthomelis. Um, been very reluctant to feed on frozen thawed uh, rodents. It's one of these shy ones that strike as a last resort. Um, I find that the ones that are more aggressive and quicker to strike uh, have a tendency to, uh, to feed a lot better. Subsequently, uh, we have to uh, force feed this guy, and we've been using pinks, but the pinks sort of explode. Let go of that before you get cut. Thank you. Uh, they sort of explode. Oh, no ro rotating in the fingers. Ah, that's not allowed. Uh, whereas this. Once we get it in and started, it uh, won't be subject to fall apart. And actually, we'll go down the hatch uh, a whole lot better. Uh, because it's just about the right size. Now let's see if he'll take the rest of that down himself, uh, since it's at that stage. And then if he does, I'll piggyback something along with it. Maybe. See, now that was uh, a far less struggle uh, trying to force feed him a strip of beef heart. Um, and I suppose you can uh, use any cut of uh, a beef that you want. It's just that here in the U.S., beef heart isn't all that popular, uh, except uh, amongst our Hispanic population who use it, and I believe menudo. Um, therefore, it's uh, I got those two huge hearts for like um, you know eight dollars a piece or so, and they were well over a pound, uh, and it yields an awful lot lot of meals. Uh, especially for itty bitty snakes like this uh, whether they take it on their own or not um, it compresses real well and doesn't blow up like uh, uh, other uh, pinky parts that we might try to shove down their throat the whole idea now is just to uh, get them feeding uh, are we going to regurge? We are trying to regurge. Okay. Um, the whole idea is to get nutrition down their, their gullet. And this is absolutely the easiest uh, way of doing that. And then once it's past the hatch, we just uh, uh, milk it down to the gut area and let them go and digest away. So... Uh, <laughs> I can't tell you, that, that is so much easier than a pink. If anyone has ever force fed a pinky, which is mostly water, 87% water, um, you know, you can definitely uh, uh, appreciate how easy uh, that is. Here's another little poor feeder. Okay, and let me demonstrate... Uh, uh, why that's a poor feeder. These are all born uh, the same exact time. And this is one of my very... Oh! Hold on there, buddy. This is one of the good feeders who's like three times his length and certainly well, it's close to a foot long compared to a few inches. Oh, and very lively and very strikey. Come on. Come on, settle down. Also, quite a beautiful little customer. Now, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Oh, strikey. 
Strikey and crikey, they rhyme. Alright, he's... This big monster is getting out of Dodge. Getting on the floor, even. Come on. Alright, well, you get the idea that this little guy hasn't quite got with the program yet and subsequently uh, is languishing in size. So, as I said, pinkies are 87% water, so they're really not the most nutritious things that you can give to your neonates. Whoa, that was really close. You almost got me there, bud. Oh, we're a little monster, aren't we? Now, we always try to be very gentle and not puncture their esophagus or try to insert it down their windpipe. Um, and certainly, a squirmy wormy like this is, is very dangerous to hold, as I just saw a very close call. Uh, it was very close to sticking in my finger his cute little fang, although he is quite diminutive compared to the other one, I'm sure it would have been a very unpleasant experience. So, this very high density uh, piece of beef is far more nutritious uh, than certainly uh, any two or probably more nutritious than two or three pinkies, um, which is sort of what these guys really need to get kicked off and uh, uh, catch up to their brethren there. Uh, let's see, who else? Uh, you're doing pretty well, so I'm not going to bother you. Oh, This guy's long because it's a male but not a terribly good feeder. So let's go ahead and give him a try. These males are very, very difficult to pin because they will, uh, uh, they will do anything and everything to avoid uh, being held. Um, first time that I picked them up, it was, uh, it was quite the undertaking. There we go, that's a good boy. And once we got it in, see the, the nice, soft, glistening meat uh, just slides down their gullet so nicely, even though they're putting up quite a fuss. And certainly speeds this force feeding process. It's not the adult snakes in my collection that take all my time. Because those guys are just like the puff adders. You just throw a piece of meat at them and they're going to eat the vast majority of them. It's, uh, it's all these little guys that you have to spend 15 or 20 minutes with them uh, just to get something in them sometimes. Not even all the time. So that's why I use the beef heart trick. Um because it's just so much easier and faster. Oh, now here's our friendly neighborhood baby perp who are n notoriously bad feeders um, and notoriously uh, testy customers. This is another male. Go ahead and you can bite that. That's fine. Here, want to do that again for the camera? There you go. Thank you. And they're at least cooperative in some respects. Uh, biting is one of those things. But they don't like to eat. I've spent lots of hours shoving uh, pinkies down their throat and this guy is just ooh, arr, 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 arr. he's doing a seal imitation arr, arr, arr. No, sorry um, and he is just adorable look at that coloration on his head I mean that's a real beautiful little perp uh, and I would like to get him to adulthood uh, and he's trying his damnedest to die on me. So, I haven't been able to get good, good quality pinkies that will stand up to thawing and uh, being shoved down the resistance snake's gullet. 
And I have to be aware, when I release this guy, he is wrapped around my wrist. Uh, I have to remember to remove him from my wrist before we let him go. There we go. See, now this is, this is so much faster than than your normal uh, uh, force feeding of pinks. Um, just so much faster and easier. And you get a lot more bang for the buck, uh, so to speak. You just uh, love to uh, try to bite me. Woo. You know, everybody says, oh, what's a good snake to start with? Well, good thing to start with is your cat. If you got a real sort of mean cat, get yourself a nice pair of leather gloves and play cobra with the cat. If uh, you can evade the cat's, you know, strikes with its paws uh, and, you know, touch its, touch its head, um, you're uh, building your reflexes uh, uh, to sort of where you need to, to deal with these little buzzards. Uh, 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 I saw that. Now stop it. You're too close for me to cut this piece of meat for you. I am, you know, this is like a custom uh, butcher shop for them. Although I think I did uh, make it a little bit on the on the thick side for the, the bigger perp, but she's a big girl, she can handle it. Oh, I know there's a joke there, but I, uh, um, you know, I won't, uh, won't go there. This is a family program. Whoa! -ho -ho! Whoa! -ho -ho! That was excellent! You almost got me! That was a nice long, uh, jump. You know, always, uh, uh, they will go to all lengths to bite you, these perps. Uh, and that was a pretty good one. Now, see how wide that piece of meat is? Uh, let's move it over here. See how wide that is? But watch, that compresses just so well uh, that I will go down in her, in her gut really well. And look at that. It holds right between the forceps blades uh, very nicely. Now, uh, these forceps are as old as the hills. I got them when I was a teenager working on snakes. Someone asked me where I got them. Well, you know, I got them uh, because I was hanging out in uh, 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 with a, my best friend um, whose father was a doctor and he had all sorts of uh, goodies lying around that, uh, that we got to uh, to have and play with and stuff because we were always uh, doing something uh, uh, medical or scientifically related. Uh, so, you know, there are surgical supply houses out there and, you know, or even on eBay they've got a number of fine tools. Um, what you want to do is not get bit. Oh, there you go, bud. Ah, no, don't bite yourself. Now look at this guy. This guy is another male that I kept. Uh, particularly, uh, simply, come on, focus, fingers, there's my fingers, focus, good thing. Look at that nice red eye he's got, or, well, that's, that's why I kept this male. This male, instead of Ishmael. Ah, oh, you're being difficult. Oh, you're being very difficult.